Well, what I do? really think that he should be on the ballot. He's the only man I know of anywhere in the country that's ever gone around and not be afraid to say what he thinks and stands up for what's right. And he does what he says he will do. That means a lot to the people of the United States. If he promises something, he does it. Lou, what do you think uh, if, if he does decide to run and runs? Uh, I think he, uh, of course, the national ticket's going to try to keep him off, but what would you think about him uh, running as an independent? What do you think along that line? I think that he has a good chance regardless of what ticket he runs on. Well, I think if people are going to uh, make up their mind to vote for the man and not for the... Uh, well, I believe the people party. have gotten, the, gotten to the point now where that they want some old-fashioned constitutional government where the people have something to say about how the government's run, and I think George Wallace is a man that'll bring that trend back in America. And that's why I think that uh, if he can get on the ballot, that there's no doubt that he will either be elected or else that he will put the election in the House of Representatives because he'll carry enough weight all across the nation, not only just in the South, because they're going to see what kind of man he is. And he does stand for these things and means what he said. Another reason I think he'll be elected, because he's for the little man. And there's more little people than there are big ones. May your candidacy uh, turned out to be successful. Would there be a possibility of, re of reversing the precedent the courts established in yes. this matter and the great federal pressure? If I, were, if I were the president of the United States, you can rest assured that uh, there would be a reversal. I would uh, point different people to the courts, oriented uh, differently toward the Constitution. I wouldn't want to uh, control the court system. We should have an independent judiciary, but we don't have one now. Uh, in my judgment, we have one that has, uh, instead of being independent, instead of being a judiciary that has uh, used judicial restraint, they have now imposed their notions about what the Constitution ought to be upon the people of Alabama and of Georgia. And uh, if I were the president, I would take every bureau in Washington out of the school business. And I would say to the people of Atlanta and of Georgia, you run your schools like you want to run them. I have no recommendation to make to you, but I've got confidence in you, the people. And after all, that's what the liberals are always saying, the people. Well, if they believe in the people, why not let the people of Georgia run their school system? Is it that the people of Georgia, though, are not who they're talking about? I think that's true. They're talking about the people in the so-called intelligentsia echelons uh, that think they have more wisdom and more ability than does the auto work in Atlanta, or the textile work in Georgia, or the, or the, or the sheet metal work, or the barber, the beautician, the farmer, uh, the fireman, the policeman. But these people, the truck driver, the little farmer, the little businessman, but these people themselves have more wisdom about how matters ought to run every day than do these intellectual incompetents that today have destroyed race relations and have destroyed local government in our country and even advanced the idea that you can advocate the victory of the enemy in Vietnam over our servicemen under the guise of academic freedom. We average folks don't understand that. And the academic uh, in, uh, intellectual incompetence are going to get run over one of these days by the people of this country. This is part of a typical day's mail to the Wallace Campaign National Headquarters here in Montgomery. Some 250 to 1,000 pieces of mail a day arrive at this headquarters, and most of the mail has money in it. And of course, money is needed to run a campaign of this size. In Auburn, seat of Alabama's well-regarded Polytechnic Institute, we talked to young supporters of George Wallace especially as native Alabamians particularly, we are proud of George Wallace and we also think he's a very capable man and he has done so much for our state. He has raised the educational level and uh, just overall he's just, we think that he's uh, the man for the job. Well, this is our world. We're the ones to inherit this world. And George Wallace, Lyndon Johnson, Ronald Reagan, Romney, the rest of them will pass on. They'll leave it to us. And so what they make will be what they leave to us and what kind of world they leave to us. And I believe George Wallace is the type of man that will leave to this country a world we can be proud of. 
not a world that they'd like for you to believe where there's prejudice and bias for a man. I've never hated another man in my whole life, just pure hating because, and I don't even know him, because I've always tried to, my folks brought me up to try to be a Christian, and I believe that way. And that's another thing I believe that has been a, a breakdown in this country is of, of young people uh, trying to, um, They've lost Christianity in their life. They, they, they have lost the meaning for God. And I believe God has a very definite place in everybody's life, in political life. This country was founded by Christians. Well, Governor Wallace is a very uh, religious man. And uh, he holds that uh, some of his highest principles are, are, are governed by the law of God. And I think all men are governed by the law of God. That law comes first before any law. We're going to turn the schools back to the people of Georgia and let you determine the educational policies of your own child. Now, if the candidates don't say that, then as far as I'm concerned, there's not a dime's worth of difference in any one of them. So we've got to have not only the candidate, but he's going to have to run on the proper platform. And we're tired of generalities and platitudes. And if you're going to elect somebody who looks good on television, who sounds good, who makes a sweet sound in speech and has a fine voice, well, you could elect Walter Cronkite, or you could elect Hunt, Hunt Lynn Brinkley, or you could elect some of the national newscasters if you're going to elect people on how they sound on television. That's not going to suit us. And it, as it stands now, there's not a dime's worth of difference in the leadership of both national parties, and I don't believe there's going to be a dime's worth of difference in their platforms in 1968. And if there's not, then I'm going to be in Georgia, and I'm going to be throughout the country, and give the people a chance to express themselves.